Thank you, Father God. Well, this morning we will, we will start praying for the Lord uh, to put their hands and the Spirit on, on the service, okay? Please bow our hands, our heads, please. Good Father in heaven, we thank you for helping us to get to this place, to listen to your word, help us to understand the message and say that in our heart, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Talk to the end of times is an issue and that aroused some joy and other sadness and another people's fears and another's disgust and discomfort and other people scoffs and others are skeptical but I have a news for them. God will be uh, fulfill all that is greeting, that is written in due time. It doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't matter what is on the news or in the internet, uh, God's words is going, is going to fulfill. And uh, it's, it's going to take time, but it will fulfill. We're going to start um, reading Matthew, book of Matthew. But before, we're going to do the Bible confession. Please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Tim, for your help. <laughs> Yeah, when you are here, in this point, in this position, in this place, you forgot many things. And thank you for the brothers and the team, because we are a team that, uh, that we support each other. Well, I know we want to read it from the screen. It's more easy. This is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. My eyes are open. My heart is prepared to receive all God's promises and instructions. Today, I mind my Bible, the final authority in my life, so that in every circumstance, I will bear good fruit, and others will see Christ in me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, my brothers, for your support. Please open your Bibles on Matthew... 24, 3. I'm going to try to read from the screen because something happened to my iPad. It doesn't uh, get internet. And uh, the version that I was using, it was an amplified version. And uh, about, we want to please follow the screen. We want to read uh, together, okay? While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this take place? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? This message or this uh, verse, the, uh, the apostles, they are against asking three questions. The first one, um, when was this going to take place? That already was fulfilled when the destruction of Jerusalem on the year 70. That the, other, the other two, <clears throat> the other two, there are the signs of the coming of Jesus and the ends of the ages, of the age. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. At this time of uh, on time, 
I know in the there's many uh, well many every country every continent uh, has or has their own Christ their own uh, um, deceivers there's many people well some of them they are calling them, themselves Christ and there's many people they are following they follow those guys or those persons and we can see uh, through the television or through the internet but because it's written that it's going to it's going to be uh, all those people uh, they are deceiving uh, many, many uh, people. The message that I will give is written on the book of Matthew. Because the reason that I'm going to prepare or I, did I prepare this message is because, because I had a dream on April 18. It was 4 in the morning. In this dream, it was, um, well, let me share this dream with you guys. I'm going to try to, um, to express the dream, the meaning of the dream. In the dream, I was busy preparing the camera to start recording service as usual. When suddenly, one of the pastors approached me and told me, it's time for you to preach or today you're going to preach. Then, because it was a spontaneous, and no, um, I turned my, my head to this, to my right, and I saw Pastor Lori sitting with another woman. And when I look at her, uh, she was a smile with, always with his face, a smile on, his, on her face. And uh, she said, she moved only the, her head. At that time, I closed my eyes. I took the Bible and I prayed. Lord, please tell me or show me What do you want me to talk? Instantly, I heard a voice, and he said, Matthew 24, 3. I get ready, and I went to the pulpit, grabbed the mic, and I will start preaching. When I saw that, well, the place, the place was, was crowded. And what puzzled me, it was like the 90% 90, 90 of the people were give me be, give, giving me back. It's like 90% of all those people, it was uh, watching to the other uh, point. And only like 10% of the people, they were ready to listen the message. When I saw that, I turned my head to see Pastor Lori, and she made this uh, movement. She said, well, I assume that she said, continue. And then I wake up, and um, I went and read Matthew 24, 3. At that time, I, I didn't know until the morning or the next, next day, uh, well, I read the Bible and, uh, and I prayed to, to God for giving me instructions and directions. And at that time, it was a, in Mexico City, it was an earthquake at that time. Probably at the same time, around, around the same time. That's why I'm here to, to read Matthew 24. And we're only going to read uh, Matthew 24, 3, 
and some of those verses. For nearly 2,000 years, the coming of Christ is expected. There were many who do not believe on his coming. Others already stopped believing, and others die waiting for the coming. But we are waiting for the coming every minute, every hour, every day. He makes us a promise. And we, we need to live every day with the promise that he's coming. He's going to come. And some churches or some people or some many people, some many churches, they don't believe that. They... They forgot that um, that God, Jesus, is coming one more time. And it's sad because the church get involved in different st styles and different stuff. And we get busy in our, our, life, in our own lives. And we forget this. The times, we are living in difficult times. And... Let's continue. On Matthew 24, we're going to touch three points. One is persecution for faith in Christ. And number two, the false prophets who will lead many astray. And point three, believers growing cold because of loneliness. Persecution of the persecution for faith in Christ is already on the world. The false prophets who will lead many astray, they are already here. And um, they were here many decades ago. Just for, for example, um, in the Spanish community, there is a, a man in uh, Florida that they call Jesus. They call him Jesus. And it's sad. Many people and rich people, they treat him like uh, the son of God. Um, and um, it's sad. Let's read Matthew 24, uh, verses five, 4 and 5. Watch out that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. And I will deceive many. And will deceive many. That is very clear. Let's go to Matthew well, 24, 6 and 8. 6 to 8. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened of trouble, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in place after place. All this is but the beginning of the, of the birth pangs. There's many people that are counting the earthquakes and also the website from the government. There is the USS uh, geologic, geological place that is um, monitoring the earth uh, every second. And uh, if you go to the place, it's scary because the, the earth is um, tremble every day, every second. Um, I don't know, there's thousands of earthquakes, from the small ones to the big ones. And, but don't worry, it's part of the scripture. 
Verses 8 says, all these are the beginning of the birth pains. This is just the beginning. For many years, those earthquakes, um, there, they are um, on Earth, and um, they, more earthquakes are coming. Don't be scared for those. Let's read Matthew 9 to 10. Then they will hand you over to suffer affliction and tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. That's very clear. Your look so sad or your faces from this point look so different. You know what? All, all these instructions or warnings are for the people that do not know Jesus. All those warnings are for all those people that they don't want nothing to do with God or church stuff. The people that don't want to read the Bible or get communion or uh, get experience with God. All those warnings are for them. Not for us. Let's continue. Let's go and read um, well continuing on that on that verse. And this passage on this verse warns the faithful followers of Christ who will be persecuted and killed because many will be offended by the word of God and be betrayed many beginning with the family and then by friends and acquaintances. Here in this country, and it's starting to annoy many people, Bible values and teachings are offended. Some people get offended by the things that is on the Bible. Right now, I don't know if uh, you heard the, the oh, oh, do you see the magazine, the Voice of Martyrs? Voice of the Martyrs? Uh, it's terrible. It's terrible because right now and um, around the world, there is countries. They are c killing people, Christians. You know what? This is a privilege to be here. And this morning, it's a privilege to be here. Because in other, in other countries, they don't have the time. They don't have the place. They have to hide themselves. We are more than blessed. We are more than blessed. Don't forget that. And hopefully, hopefully those, um, this time of fellowship, uh, this privilege that we have, we need to pray for this privilege to keep it. Because the laws in this country are changing. And you know what? Our generation, this generation, they need to know God. Because this generation, well, well this is the youngest one. This is the, <laughs> not too young. Pastor, Pastor Ron and, and sister. <laughs> You're in the, in the right place. Oh, my wife too, Miss D, Miss Carol. Sorry, you too. So this is a young area. And you know what? This young area, those young people need to know and have a relationship, a real relationship with God. 
Hey, you guys, you guys. Are you listening? Oh, these guys. Yeah, I know you're listening. It's a scare. I don't know how many of you guys are, are you guys are studying to be lawyers. How many of you guys are studying to be lawyers? None of them? Okay. The lawyers are changing the laws. And if we don't have lawyers, there are Christians. That's terrible. This generation, they go, they going to see many changes. I heard a guy the other day um, when he was all this booze about the disarming the people of the United States, and uh, this. Uh, Bet, a veteran guy, he told me, you know what, don't worry. Probably this in these 10 years, it will, it will be okay. But the people that is above, they're waiting for the next generation because they have a different mentality. You guys, you have to keep the mind of Christ. Not the mind of this world, honestly. This for our own sake. I don't know if you heard about the... Well, let's continue. For example, um, I'm subscribed to this prophecy um, news. And I received this... Um, Uh, posting. For example, we have an example in Virginia, in Virginia State. I don't know if you have it, uh, Brother Tim. In Virginia, it says, uh, will holding or hosting a home Bible study soon be declared illegal in Virginia? A Virginia resident who recently began one of the Fairfax County is expressing concern over a proposed zoning ordinance that he say may make such gathering illegal. The ordinance at issue pertains to large homes gathering that are held on a frequent basis and limit such meetings to three times every 40 days with a maximum of 49 attendees. Um, we heard, uh, well, in the internet, you can search a lot of, uh, lots of information a lot of information. And um, some of them, some information are good, some information <coughs> mal half true and half lies. But we need to, uh, all the information that we found, we need to pass it through the filter of the Bible. Because we are in that process, we are in that moment. Persecution, persecution is coming. Awake. It's time to awake. It's time to um, wake up. Um, unfortunately, they call good poor and call evil good. Those words are here. Every day we heard the news. Sometimes there's are bad news, but those news are terrible. Um, use, continue on praying. Let's go to verse 11 to 13. It 
And many false prophets will appear, appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. The prophets, the false prophets, what is a false prophet? I have three points for those. Those who worship false gods and serve idols. Those who falsely claim to have a received message from God. And those who deviate from the truth and cease to be true prophets. Those false prophets are here. Will you, um, if you search on the internet, there's a lot of people, a lot of pastors, or unfortunately they say those are false prophets. Uh, many of them, they're making statements or claiming that they receive the voice of God and the word of God and they make predictions and those predictions, they're not true. And um, if you say something, if you say that God told you to, to say or to do, or is going to, to pass, and nothing happened, you're in trouble. We need, to, we need to be careful whatever we say about God. Because many people, they are watching us. People around us are um, see, seeing our actions, our testimony, whatever we act, or whatever we do, whatever we say, people are taking pictures and video filming us without our consent, just for the record. This is not an internet stuff, okay? In verse 13, but he who endures to the end will be saved. It's a promise. It's a promise. Ah, you are very... Okay. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. We'll be saved. We don't have to worry about all the stuff. This stuff is for the world. It's for the unsaved. But uh, we need to be careful. Let's see verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. That means until every creature in this planet heard the voice, the gospel of Jesus, and then everything is going to fall. How much time we have? That's a good question. Do you know what is the window 1040? Window 1040 is not a Windows or Mac or PC or whatever. No, it's a window 1040. This window is not a... I'm just kidding. No, no, the, 1040, the window 1040 exists, really. The window 1040 window is located from 10 degrees south to 40 degrees north of the equator. There are 69 nations across Northern Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia in the 1040 window. Nearly 4 billion people live here including 
90% of the world's poorest of the poor. It is estimated that 1.6 billion of these peoples have never had the chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, not even once in that particular region of the world. If just imagine that we all here get all our luggage and stuff and travel to those countries. And one of them, one of each of us, take like, I don't know, a um, 100 miles a square and seek for those peoples and preach the gospel. That will be easy to do it. And in the mine in here sitting with this nice um, air condition. But over there, those countries are the poorest of the poor. There's poor people. Sometimes they don't have nothing to eat. They don't know Jesus. And they need to know Jesus. That's the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus, the Son of God, came to this planet. He came to save us. And only through him we have a salvation. That's the gospel. He, only, he is the, the way, the truth, and the life. No one else. No one else. In this statement, many people don't believe. They mock. They laugh. But let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Let's read from 14 to 34. That will be easy. I'm sorry, from 15. Okay. Oh, my gosh. oh my gosh, my iPad went crazy. Uh, okay, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. It's, it's in control. I, I have it, it's in control. You know, those technology, we cannot rely on technology. We need papers. <laughs> we need papers and Bibles. Yes. The youngest. Yeah, technology. But it's a scare because the government tried to put the switch on the internet. If they do it, oh my gosh, this it were worthless because. You have your phones and tablets and iPads and all the stuff with the internet. If you don't have internet, oh my gosh, we are out of business. <laughs> I went the other day to my um, um, sister-in-law, and uh, they have like, well, she has five kids, and they were angry in the house. And I say, what's wrong with you guys? Huh? Oh, we don't have internet in the house. My mom, they paid the bill. What? And are you angry? Yes. Well, here is my phone. No, your phone is old. <laughs> now I have a 5S, okay? But only my grandkids touch the phone. Um, you can touch it too, okay? Okay, let's read uh, from 15 to 34. So when you see you standing in the holy place, okay, let me read it from the screen. The appalling sacrile sacrilege, the abomination that is astonished and makes desolate, is spoken of the prophet Daniel, Standing in the holy place, let the reader take notice and ponder and consider and heed this. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is in the house stop, now come down and go into the house to take anything. 
and let him who is in the field not turn back to get his overcoat. And alas, for the women who are pregnant and for those who have nourished, nursing babies in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or in Sabbath. For then, there will be great tribulation, affliction, distress, and oppression, such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be again. And if those days had not been shortened, no human being will endure and survive, but for the sake of the elect, that means us, those days will be shortened. If anyone says to you then, Behold, here is the Christ, the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will arise, and they will show great signs and wonders, so as to deceive and lead astray, if it's possible, even the elect. Who are the elect? Us. Next, Brother Tim. See, the Lord says, I have warned you beforehand. So if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, in the desert, do not go there, out there. If they tell you, behold, he is in the sacred places or inner rooms, do not believe it. For just as the lightning flashes from the east and shines and scenes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever there is fallen bodies, a corpse, there the vultures of, of eagles will be flocked together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark, and the moon will not shine, shed its light, and the stars will fall from the skies, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the sun of men will be appear in the skies, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and beat the, their breast and lament in anguish, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with powers and great glory and brilliancy and splendor. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect, us, from our wind, from the four winds, even from one of the end of the universe to the other. From the fig tree, learn this lesson: as soon as its young shoots become soft and tender, and it puts out its leaves, you know of as surely that summer is near. Summer is near. So also, when you see these signs, all talking together, taken together, coming to pass, you may know surely that he is near at the very doors. Truly I tell you, this generation, the whole multitude of people living at the same time in the definite given period, will not pass away Deal, all these things taking place together take place. The sky and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. We don't know the time and the hour, but the times we can see and we can feel it. We are right now in like the times of Noah. We are not going into that, um, into those uh, verses, but in, at your house, you can do your homework 
and finish the rest of the of the chapter. Um, and the next chapter says that we are in the, like Noah's days. At that time, everything was corrupted. Right now, not everything is corrupted. Almost, but not everything. Yes? Yes? Okay. Young people? Yes? Yes, okay. The, came, the, the coming of our Savior comes suddenly. There was destruction for those who don't know and those who are or are corrupted by sin. During the flood, like Noah's time, God protects his chosen ones, his children. We have the insurance that through the storms or destructions, God will save, God will save his children. At the time of Noah, all the people, they didn't believe in Noah's preaching. But when the flood came, all the people tried to get into the arcs, or to the ark, I'm sorry. But only Noah and Noah's family were saved because they were his children. At this time, everybody who declares that Jesus is their uh, Lord and Savior, those people are the children of God. In Ephesians 5.14, Ephesians 5.14 Therefore, he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Who is dead? The people that don't know Jesus. The dead are the people that don't know the truth. They don't know the Bible. The dead are people that they, know, they don't know God or they, they don't want nothing to God or with God. And Christ shall shine upon you and give you light. It's time to awake. It's easy to sleep, very easy. We have many distractions, but it's time to awake and arise from the dead. And it's time to change our behavior. Behavior? Because people, our families and friends and co-workers and neighbors needs, uh, they, they want to or they're going to start seeing a change in our lives, in our attitudes. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Matthew 28, 19, Now, it's from the 19, my brother. 
19 to 20. Thank you. We have an instruction. Every one of you, every one of us, we have an instruction from God, from Jesus. It says, Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you and behold I am with you all the days perpetually uniformly and on every occasion to the very close and consumption of the ages Amen He is with us like the song Emmanuel, I love that song. Emmanuel, in Spanish is Emmanuel, also. Dios con nosotros, God with us. Dios con nosotros. I will say it. Ah, no, 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 don't say it. Don't worry. It's not a Spanish class, okay? Dios con nosotros, God with us. Es Emmanuel. It's a promise. He will be, and he is, and he is now. Let's pray.